Hello, welcome to OS Engine tutorial number 101. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize a LiDAR point cloud in Jupyter using just one line of code. So LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging. Now it's a widely uh, popular data set uh, that uh, format that's used in remote sensing. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Python and Jupyter to visualize the data. First, let me show you what the output looks like. It'll be something like this. So you can um, visualize that in, in 3D and then you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can rotate. Uh, you can also change the uh, the color map, like what kind of color you, you want to use to visualize the data so that you can see uh, the gradients um, changing from, for example, blue, uh, low elevation to red color, uh, represent uh, high elevation. So those clearly, those are basically trees you build a CPU building something like that. So um, first, uh, let's um, open the, uh, let's download the Jupyter Notebook example. So go to gmap.org and then uh, tutorials, scroll down to the end, find number 101, click notebooks, and then upper right corner here to download this one to your computer. Okay, and once you have downloaded it, you can open that using the Jupyter Notebook. So keep that in mind, this notebook requires some option, uh, optional dependencies of GMAP. So, uh, for example, the Open 3D, and you can also install the uh, optional dependencies using this one GMAP bra uh, uh, square brackets LIDAR. Uh, that means some of the optional dependencies is going to be installed. The reason that it's not a required dependency because it's not, it, this is only used once um, in GMAP, so it's not widely used, and some of the packages are quite large so i don't actually include them in the required dependencies, uh, dependencies if you want to find out like what kind of those lidar optional dependencies you can go to gmap uh, github repository and then click setup.py uh, uh, scroll down from here you should be able to find out uh, what kind of optional dependencies ipy gany last pi panel point cloud pi vista and also open 3d so i don't actually include open 3d because this is a huge uh, package it's like i think over 400 megabytes so it's it's, it's quite large and i don't e even include it in the optional dependency so you will need to install all of them uh if you want to run all, uh, all the examples uh, in this notebook okay so once you have it installed it then we can uh, import the libraries and so in this example we're going to use a sample lidar data set uh, covers I think um, Madison a city in uh, Mississippi and it's 52 megabyte uh, the uncompressed last file is 109 megabyte so it's a pretty uh, decent size of a uh, last uh, data set and so if you execute this it's going to download the notebook to your current working directory uh, if you don't already have the file so uh, since I already downloaded it earlier uh, you'll be able to see this one here medicine dot last and um, if you want you can open it using desktop js for example qgs so let me show you like if you come back here uh, you can directly drag and drop the data layer let me remove that uh, first just to show you all right so just come here drag and drop the file and then you should be able to see here um, it also automatically give you all the color so the classification quite nicely for example a ground ground color to low vegetation high very uh, high vegetation building something like that you can zoom in you can zoom out uh you will be able to see the point so this has millions of points uh just basically a collection of points and now you can only visualize this in 2d um, but uh, you should be able to find some uh optional up uh, install some additional plugins to visualize them in 3d but we're going to do that here in this notebook just uh, using a zoop in the notebook because uh, we want just to run them in the browser we don't want to install any desktop uh, software if uh, you don't have if you don't have access to that environment so first let's uh, read the data so if you use gmap it's just one function read uh, underscore lidar and the file name so pretty simple and once you have read this one it becomes a lidar port cloud it becomes an object then you can access the attributes so for example last dot hit tab you will see a list of available attributes that you can access and so first one here we're going to look at is the uh, the header so you can think about like a metadata information uh, it shows you the versions of uh, the version of the lidar data so it's 1.3 uh, last format 
and it's a point format if you want to see for example how many points in there you can use the point count the point count so you here in this example is over 4 million points so just take single file it contains information uh, about 4 million points and even to see more you can hit tab you will see uh, here we have a quite a uh, uh, comprehensive list of attributes that you can access right and next let's take a look at like what kind of available attributes you can access so there's a uh, last of point format uh, this one is called dimension names uh, you can think about just all the all, uh, available attributes for each point so uh, we have four million points each point has this attribute information you can think about just like a uh, straight file that you have each row represent one point and these are the, all the names of the columns right and you have millions of points you're going to have millions of uh, uh, rows if you use straight file but the light up uh, the last format is very uh efficient so it doesn't store as the uh, the sweat file but essentially they're the same thing that uh, each point contain this kind of information and so next i want to show you how you can retrieve the data you can directly use last.x uh you'll be able to access uh, all the information the information for all the points is an array so take a look shift tab right this is the array and this is essentially the Kind of the longitude so x would be the longitude y would be the latitude right and then so g would be the uh, elevation so you can take really you can get access to all the numbers and if you want to access all the x y z all together you can just uh, lowercase dot x y z and you will be able to get at least uh, basically still a, an array but its item its element is a three um elements uh list so it will be the x y g right so for example over like two uh two million something so the point is going to be different so it depends on the location and you can access this directly using the x y z the next one will be useful uh it will be the intensity intensity so sometimes people would like to use this one also you can use that to classify different uh land use types uh, using the intensity and that's pretty much it like you can if you want to access other attribute you are welcome to export it so again the function is read lidar once you have read the lidar um you can get access to information but we would like to visualize that so you if you want to visualize the lidar data you can use the view um, view lidar and then passing the parameters so if you press shift tab on, uh, on your keyboard to bring up the help documentation uh the file file name cmap uh, the color map what kind of protein back end you want to use and also what kind of background color uh, you want to use so uh, you can enter additional arguments uh, if uh, the protein back end supports that so here we're just passing the file name we're going to use the terrain uh, color map and the default protein back end uh, will be pi vista so if you don't provide uh, you'll be to use the pi vista uh, pi vista is a uh, 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 open source package they used to um, visualize data in 3d so it's quite interesting you can check out uh, github or google it if you want but this is what it looks like the output right so you can zoom in you can zoom out you also see this one here this will be the uh the legend also the color bar they show you here and then for example xyz right so you can zoom in you can zoom out you can rotate and if you it's slightly there's some lag but it's not very smooth but it works just fine so if you zoom in right so you see all the points these are all the trees right uh, and then if you continue zooming eventually you'll be able to see all the points right so as i mentioned earlier we have over four million points in, in this file so it's a very dense uh light up point cloud so you can zoom out right you can see the building so blue color represent low elevation and the brown color and white color represent higher elevation so you can zoom in you can rotate right pretty nice and just one line of code that's it so next i'm going to show you the other protein back end so this one use ipy gany oh by the way here the color map you can change to whatever color map supported by map plot deep so let me show you how can you find out what kind of color maps are available you can do import gmap dot color maps is cm and then uh, the cm dot uh i think it's plot 
uh, this one takes a while okay plot color maps and you will be able to show you a preview of all the color maps so you can get the name uh, if you're passing uh, an invited name here uh, it's going to tell you that uh, it's invited so just want to make sure that uh, if the terrain the uh, color map is not the one you want you can change it to other color maps okay so take a look at this one it's a huge list of color maps uh, hundreds of color maps right so for example if you want to change to others they say uh you want to change to how about this for example uh turbo for example right this change to turbo so just pay attention to here c map T E R B O shift tap a uh, shift enter right you can see it changed the color pretty instantly so this is how you can customize you can change to G I S T E A R T S uh, E A R right take a look right. different color different uh, color scheme uh, you will kind of select from whatever available there so this is using the first uh, the default protein backend high vista. The next one I'm going to show you is using iPyGany. So uh, this one we can also set the background color. So take a look. Uh, shift tap, uh, shift uh, enter, and uh, it depends on the some of the protein are faster, some are a little bit slower. And this one uh, is also quite interesting because it has a list of color map of very uh, pre-populated. So I can just select on the this, and you can see I can just change to whatever color maps uh, that you like. The list is not as comprehensive as the all the map plot lip uh, color map, but it's still quite nice that you don't need to find out the name manually. You can just select from the list, and again, you can uh, you can also zoom uh, zoom in, zoom out. You can also rotate uh, to see that in 3D. Um, you can also have the color bar, so this is a kind of combination. But I feel that this is also a little bit. Uh, it's not very smooth, but again, it works just fine. Uh, okay, so the second one is iPyGany. The third one is uh, Panel. So Panel is also another very popular Python uh, package, and they are also very much very similar, right? The function, the arguments are the same. You just change the plotting by end. That's it. So Shift Enter, uh, you will be able to visualize that in Panel. And those are those are the three protein backends that you can install using GMAP square brackets LIDAR. So they are all the optional dependencies uh, for, for GMAP. Okay, so take a look. This one is much smoother, but it's uh, it's a little bit small and uh, it does not have the color bar. So I'm not sure because I'm not quite familiar with all these packages. And so I don't know how to add that yet, but if you know, they are, let me know. So this is how we can visualize that and I believe you can also change the color for example turbo it might be a bit slower so it depends on the color map depends on the protein backend so you just need to be uh, patient for this one and once you see this one we, we can change to see the last uh, last one okay so this is turbo okay and this is how we can visualize that. All right, last one, Open 3D. Uh, personally, I like this one the most uh, because you all the other three uh, protein backends, you just create a new core block beneath the source code. Uh, but this one actually generate an independent one. Let me see here. Hmm. It's not popping up. Let me re uh, clear all the outputs. Let me run this one again. Sometimes it's just a little bit buggy. So the file name and that's it. And just try this one one more time. Hopefully it works. So you open uh, like yeah, just like this. So now you have an independent uh, window. Uh, it's outside the Jupyter notebook. So it's pop up something like this. And then you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can rotate. So this one gives you a little bit more uh, space. And you clearly you can see the color, you can change the color. But the downside is that I don't know, I'm not sure how to change the color yet, but at least you can visualize that something like this. So you can visualize any LiDAR point cloud uh, using this one. Right? And so red color represents high elevation, blue color represents uh, low elevation. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out. 
the downside is that it does not have a color uh, color bar uh, in here so you don't really see the absolute elevation of the point cloud but it looks pretty nice right so if you zoom in you see uh, many more points in here after you finish just click the close button upper right corner and then to return to the normal to the notebook right that's it and again just to recap what we did uh you use the read lidar function to read the lidar data and then you can access all the available attributes if you want to visualize the data use the view lidar function and so here you can change the protein back end uh just one of those right uh four of four of them and you can also change the color map so if you want to see the complete list of color maps just use uh, the color map function and then cm the color maps you will see the list and then you can just grab the name replace this then uh, the color map will be using the one that you specify okay so that's all for this uh tutorial i hope you find it useful i will see you in the next one take care bye bye